What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gust, and I'm back in the physics classroom. Today, we've got a challenge live. It's our asymmetric launch challenge. I've got my mega launcher over here. Across the room, I've got my recycling bin as a backstop or a target. You can kind of see it over there on the floor. Our task today is to figure out where that waste basket needs to go so that I can launch this launcher at a 30 degree angle across the room and land it in the waste basket. I've already done it. It's in the right spot, I think. If we do it correctly, it should look something like this. All right, we set it all up. I'm going to give you a decent enough angle, hopefully. You can see this launcher go. Maybe you can hear for it if it lands in the launcher. Did you hear it? There it is. It's rolling out now. It totally landed in the launcher. I'll do it again and give you a better angle so you could actually watch the launch or watch the waste basket this time. Close up, extreme close up of the waste basket while I launch this thing across the room just to prove to you that it can be done if you're in the classroom. Here it comes. Bam! Right into the waste basket. You've got an up close and personal view of the result of doing physics properly and carefully in the classroom. So let's go ahead. First things first. Sketch a model of our problem on the board. Here we go. I've got my launcher. My launcher is set to an angle. That angle is 30 degrees. It's at a height above the table. We launch it all the way over here, and it lands somewhere on the ground right in front of our waste basket. That measurement is a range we're going to call delta x. We're going to call this delta y. It's launched with an initial velocity right here. This is my problem. Now to start, I asked you all to figure out a procedure to go ahead and determine the initial velocity of this launcher. And we went ahead and did that. And I checked in on that work as we did that. So after all of that work, what we end up coming to find is that the initial speed of this launcher is 9.40 meters per second. That's not horizontally. That's not vertically. If it was, I would have said that is the uh, speed, I'm sorry, the initial vertical velocity or the horizontal velocity. I said speed. Speed does not have a direction. Speed indicates how fast an object moves. This thing moves at 9.40 meters per second when it leaves the launcher. So this is our problem. Let's go ahead and break some variables down. Let's get our list of variables going here, see what we need to find. In order to place my uh, basket somewhere, I need to know its range. I'm really solving for delta x here. I'm trying to find where that basket should go. So this is what I'm looking for. I am looking for delta x. Where does this thing need to be so that it goes through this motion and lands in the wastebasket? The other things that I uh, need to know or could know, those are my displacements. I have my velocity in the x direction. I've got my initial velocity in the y direction, a final velocity in the y direction, an acceleration in both directions, and time in both directions. These are all things I may or may not know or I can measure. So acceleration in the y direction, let's get that one out of the way. Baby g, negative 8 meters per second squared. Acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second squared. There are no forces. These times are the same. I can probably go ahead quickly and find the trig of my speeds or my velocities in the x and y direction. We'll do that in a second. The one thing that I'm allowed to get I haven't quite gotten yet is my delta y. So let's go ahead and take that measurement. I need to know how far this marble is going to move vertically. Well, if I look here, it's clearly going to launch upward. We're launching it upward at an angle. But delta y, displacement does not care about the path of an object. Displacement is defined as the initial position and the final position and the difference between them. So I don't really care that it goes up in the air first. All I care about is that it does start here and end at the ground. So the only measurement I need to take for the y direction in centimeters is how high off the ground is this marble launched from. And so if I get my meter sticks, and this is not super accurate, but it's close enough. If I get my meter sticks and I line them up, I end up seeing that this marble is launched from a height of 1.85 meters above the table. So I can go ahead and put that in my table. It's 1.85 meters above the table. But here's the weird thing. This marble is not going up. The displacement is not upward. The displacement is downward. That means my displacement is actually negative 1.85. It is not positive 1.85. So you see my acceleration? 
downward, negative 9.8. My displacement is negative, downward 1.85. And when I find my initial y velocity, that's going to be upward at some magnitude. That's going to have to be positive. Directions in this problem are actually super important because I've got things moving in both directions. So right now, I've got all of the information I need to solve this problem. If you want a good practice problem with this type of projectile, you need to pause this video right now and solve this yourself. Go ahead and solve for delta x on your own. Do not watch me. Do not keep going. Press pause, solve it, come back and watch my steps. If you missed class today and you have no idea what we're talking about, maybe watch this thing through and then do some practice in your packet. Um, but decide what type of path you want to take right now. Pause it and do it, or watch me if you miss class and have no idea what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this now. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out my velocities in each direction out of the launcher. So I'm going to do, I'll do that up here. Uh, here it would be my vx. This vector here is my v initial in the y direction. This is going to be equal to the velocity times the cosine. And this is equal to the velocity times the sine of the angle. OK? I can go ahead and solve these out. And when I do that, here's what I end up with. Vx is equal to 9.4 times the cosine of 30 degrees. This is going to be 9.4 times the sine of 30 degrees. And uh, Vx, I already have my calculations done. So let's go ahead and check those in. Vx is 8.14 meters per second. And Vy is 4.7 meters per second. And again, I'm going to uh, put the extra positive there because we know that direction matters. Our change in y is negative. Our acceleration is downward. That's negative. I need to make sure I reaffirm with myself that this velocity is upward, so positive 4.7. Let's add those into our list of variables. 8.14 meters per second and positive 4.7 meters per second. Okay, I've got all of this data now. The only thing I really don't know is time. All right, so t I, I've done this before. I know uh, I need to find time in the y direction and then use that time to go over to the x direction and find the range. I can do that, no problem. Let's pick an equation that relates, I don't know, displacement and time. So that's things like the quadratic change in y equals initial velocity times time plus one half. I'm going to call it gt squared because we're in the y direction. So I have this equation. I start plugging things in. Negative 1.85 meters is equal to positive 4.7 meters per second times time plus one half times, make sure it's negative 9.8 times uh, t squared. And, and I hit the brakes here, right, folks? As soon as I see this, I hit the brakes. Some of you are really good at math, and the quadratic doesn't scare you, the quadratic doesn't bother you. For me, unless I have a graphing calculator, I do not want to solve a quadratic. There are few things in the world I would rather do less than solving the quadratic, and this is one of them. So like, like it's just not going to happen. I don't want to do this, so I'm going to actually choose a different equation to help me find time. I can't use this one. I can use this one. I just, I just don't want to. So I'm going to avoid that. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the other equations that I can use to solve maybe for final velocity and then substitute in to a new equation. So let's find final velocity. I'm going to go ahead and say Vf squared, V initial squared plus 2g delta y. This is my square, my third equation on the equation sheet. If I go ahead and do this, I can find final velocity and then maybe find time a different way instead of using the quadratic. So let's plug in. V final in the y direction is equal to positive 4.7 meters per second. Make sure you square that. And then times 2, make sure it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My change in y, again, make sure your directions are lining up, is negative 1.85 meters. Got it. This is my equation. I've got everything plugged in. I can go ahead and solve. My directions matter, so make sure you are keeping those straight in your head. When I algebraify this, don't forget to take the square root of the answer so you get the final and not the final squared. I end up with the final squared being equal to, it ends up being a positive number because I'm taking the square root. I get 7.64 
meters per second. And here is where your physics brain comes into play. I can't possibly take the square root of a negative number. I can't do it. It comes out with an I thing. And I remember math class, but I's were weird. They're imaginary. We don't really deal with imaginary numbers here in physics. So I have to think to myself, what direction is the marble moving vertically at the end? Is this upward at 7.6 meters per second? Or is this downward at 7.64 meters per second? And if I think about the picture I've drawn over here, it's obviously downward. So I can't leave this as positive 7.64. I have to make it negative. This ends up being downward at 7.64 meters per second. This is my final y velocity. I can go ahead and include this over here in my list of variables. Now that I have this, it's not my answer, but I was looking for this to help me find time because time is the same in both the x and y's directions. This motion uh, happens independent of each other, horizontal and vertical, but they happen simultaneously at the same time and with the same time. So I go ahead now and say let's find time without using the quadratic, the final, the initial, plus at. It's our favorite. It's our first one. We're going to use this equation here, plugging in the numbers we have from our list of variables. The final velocity is negative 7.64 meters per second. The initial velocity is positive 4.7 meters per second. The acceleration is downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time is the variable that I'm solving for. This will unlock my horizontal motion. T ends up being equal to 1.26 seconds. And that's a pretty big time given like this thing's in free fall, but let's listen. Let's go over and see, does this answer make sense? I experienced this launch, but was it really 1.2 seconds? Um, let's see, I'm gonna launch it, and you keep track in your head. Like, is this 1.2? Let's listen to it, uh, we'll hear it launch, we'll hear a hit, and we'll hear, like, was that more than a second? Let's see, ready? That's pretty close, right? Like that, I'm not sure that's 1.26. I'm not a, you know, a super genius or a robot or anything, but like that was more than a second and probably less than two seconds. So 1.26, that makes good sense to me. So we're, we're okay with that answer. There's my time. Finally, we can go over here. Add to our list of variables. And now we can find the range. The velocity in the x direction times the time we just solved for should give me this total range. So delta x is equal to the velocity, which is 8.14 uh, meters per second, times the time, which is 1.26 seconds. I end up with an answer of, and you can check this for me if you'd like, but I end up with 10 point two five meters. 10.25 meters is where that basket should be located in order for us to launch and land inside. Folks, I'm going to go set it up. Let's see how close we are to being correct. Let's check this thing out. I've got my root line tape measure over here. I'm going to place a little weight on the end of it just to see how close we can get. Crank this thing out to 10 meters. There's 10. Bam, there's 10. Let's put 10 right there. Boop, boop. Boom. I've got it taut at one end. And over here, let's see, you can see it. I've got it taut at one end over there. And then down here, I've got this thing lined up. I'm sitting it right at, let's see. 10 point, there we go, 10.25 right there. Let's see how we do. Now, we've calculated this to the front. So ideally, it's going to land right at the front of this waste basket. Not at the back. If it lands at the back, that means we measured at the back. But we measured 10.2 kind of right to the front. So now we can see, oh. Check out this view. There's the launcher. This is going to be so cool. Are you ready? Three, two. I should get over here. Three, two, one. <laughs> Boom! Did you see it? It hit the floor, and the reason it hits the floor is because we calculate to the front of the wastebasket, not to the back. But did you also see something? Did you also see what I saw? Do you see our pull-up bar right here? Watch closely. 
this marble takes off and does something really, really cool at this angle. Let's try it again. At this angle, watch the marble. Watch what it does. It is like superhuman. Watch the marble. Watch the, the pull-up bar. <laughs> Through the pull-up bar, almost touches the ceiling, and then into the bin. Folks, this is physics at its finest. This is amazing. Amazing. I have one more challenge problem for you. Figure it out if you can. If you can. That marble clears the bar and hits the ceiling at the apex. You tell me where that bar is located. Tell me where horizontally is that bar located if the apex is the bar. There's a little challenge problem for you. Solve it, bring it to class. I can talk to you about it in class here, but there's a challenge problem for you, okay? Asymmetric challenge lab, there it is, 10.25 meters. You saw the solution in person. You know, that's that. That's just that. That's physics is cool. Physics is cool. All right? See ya.